Hello, this is Tommy. Welcome back to Chatomix. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use a TX import to read in the Salmon output from bulk RNA sequencing data and then use D6 tool for downstream differential gene expression analysis. So in, the, in my last video, I showed you how to use Salmon to quantify RNA sequencing data uh, from FASTQ files downloaded uh, from GEO. And in the end, we got those four files, those quantification files. And I'll, by the way, I will have a link for the previous video in the description of this video. So essentially, we have four samples. Two samples are under uh, normoxia condition and two samples are under hypoxia condition. We are going to compare uh, what genes are differentially expressed uh, under hypoxia compared to normoxia. Okay, so... <clears throat> Let's uh, read in those uh, quantification files. So those quantification contains counts uh, at a transcript level. So uh, you use this package called TX imp import from a bioconductor to read in those uh, quantification file, okay, .sf file. So essentially, you uh, encode here, so you uh, find those files, and also you name those files with the sample name here. And to read in the uh, count file uh, at, uh, to summarize the count file at uh, gene level, so from the transcript level, you need to uh, prepare a file called tx to gene or transcript to gene file. So to do that, we uh, import the GTF file that we, uh, that we uh, used for uh, from the same actually uh, reference uh, uh, transcript transcript reference file. So in this case, the gene code GTF file. So you can use the R track layer import function to read in the GTF file. And uh, if you look at the first six rows of the GTF file, this is a genomic range range object. So uh, uh, it has the chromosome name, start and end, and some other metadata information. Uh, for each feature here. So uh, it could be a, a, a gene or a transcript, okay? So for us, we need to actually uh, uh, actually filter them uh, by a transcript and then select the transcript ID and gene ID. So now <coughs> the TX2 a gene file needs two columns. The first column is the transcript ID, and the second column is the gene ID. So if you go up here and you will see, so this, the, uh, if you select uh, type equals transcript, and then uh, you go to here, this is the transcript ID, and then you also have the uh, a gene ID. Uh, so it's here, so the gene ID is here. So you see ENSG, so this is gene, ENST, so those are transcripts, okay? So essentially, <coughs> I convert that uh, genomic range file to a data frame and then filter by type equals to transcript, and then we select those two columns, okay? So we can map the transcripts to the gene, okay? And actually, I also uh, prepared another file called gene name mapping file because this gene ID is the uh, ensemble ID. So in this case, I select the type equals to gene, and then I select the gene ID, which is the ensemble ID, and gene name, which is the official uh, uh, official uh, gene symbol. So which, which uh, is more accessible to people? Okay, this gene name here instead of those uh, gene ID. Okay. Okay. Uh, I also show you how to use unique commands to actually prepare this TX2 gene file, but uh, you can just follow in the R version. Okay. Okay. Now that we have the TX2 gene file ready, so now we can read in the uh, .sf uh, quantification file. So use the TX import function. Files essentially the, the file path for uh, the uh, .sf file, type equals to salmon, and then specify the TX2 gene uh, file we just prepared, okay? And once we do this, we can uh, uh, load the library, a DSeq2 library, 
and create the metadata uh, called uh, data frame. So essentially, uh, this is data frame we're going to create. So with one column, and those are the sample names as the row names of this data frame. And first two are normoxia condition, and second, the next uh, two are hypoxic condition. And then we can create a dsig2 object using dsig data set from tx import. And then we feed in the uh, tx dot uh, uh, salmon. And this is the uh, dot SFI with the reading and provide the metadata and how you want to compare. So essentially the condition. So, and we uh, relabel that condition using uh, normoxia as reference. So we'll compare hypoxia versus normoxia. And then this is just routine D seek to workflow and D seek uh, DDS. So we'll do all this normalization and uh, and then we can use the results function to uh, calculate differential expressions. And then we specify the contrast uh, hypoxia. This will be the uh, uh, Numerator, then it would, this will be the denominator, denominator. Okay, so essentially, this is the results of uh, the differential rate express genes. Okay, as you can see, uh, this is the ensemble gene ID. Okay, uh, but first, let's look at the uh, hi uh, histones, uh, histogram of the uh, p value uh, distribution. So, uh, so this column. Okay, so what we can do. So we can convert this re, re, uh, reads or results into a data frame, data frame, and then we can plot the p-value column as a histogram. Okay, and you can see here this is the distribution of histogram, and then you see some strange thing here. So there are uh, spikes uh, 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 here. Those are uh, p-values. Those are really big ones. Big ones. And you do see a uh, big peak uh, near the uh, p-value equals zero or 0 0.01. So those are the differentially uh, expressions with significant p-values, okay? But this is a little bit uh, strange, weird, okay? So you can further read uh, my previous post on p-values and multiple comparison of FDI and Q value and also this blog post how to interpret p-value histogram by David uh, Robinson. So in this uh, blog post, uh, he mentioned that if you see uh, some um, peaks even around uh, p-value equals to one, that means uh, uh, there's something wrong with the data. So in this case, uh, I was suspecting maybe those genes with very few number of counts is messing up here. And uh, that just was my guess. And so what I did, so I uh, kind of categorized the genes, okay, based on their p-value. And then I uh, plot their base mean, their uh, base mean, essentially the average expression level uh, between those two groups, okay? So for, for genes with p-value greater than 0.75, I say those are high value, high p-value uh, genes, those are low p-value genes. And it looks like they do have much smaller uh, base mean, which, which, which means they have a few, uh, uh, less gene expression, okay? Okay, so what we do is that before we uh, feed into dsig function, we actually uh, use the, the row sums accounts DDS column and then get the, um, the sum of the counts for each gene and we only uh, we filled out those genes that are, uh, that are smaller than 10 counts okay so this is a little bit sub, uh, subject subjective okay than the color of here but this is what I use and then we we run the same uh, code, the seq and DDS, and then results function to calculate differentially expressed genes, and replot the histogram now. And now you see this perfect actually uh, histogram uh, that you usually uh, expect to see when, if the experiment is uh, successfully done. So 
if there is no significant expressed uh, genes, you should see a flat line, flat line here. So there's no significant p values because p values are random variables and they they fall under the now, which there's no differences between treatment versus uh, versus control, and then you see a uniform distribution of the p values. However, if the alternative is true, then you should see a spike, uh, a spike uh, at the p-value um, close to zero here. Okay. And again, you can read that blog post here for more details. I highly recommend. Okay. And then we have the last task to do because uh, the uh, gene ID, uh, uh, ensemble ID, we want to map it to gene gene symbols. Okay. So, of course, we can use bioconductor packages such as annotation DBI select function or the cluster profile BITR function to map gene IDs. But in this case, we already prepared this uh, gene name map file from the GTL file, if you remember. So, uh, I just made the small function here, okay. Uh, uh, convert that results uh, object to a data frame and then uh, Put this uh, this row names it was row names into a new column called gene ID gene ID and then I left join with that um, gene name mapping file that we got from the GTL file and then return the, the, the data frame okay so if we do this look at the first uh, six rows and now we have the gene ID here but now we also have the gene name here okay and and this is also sorted by the p adjustment p, uh, value, adjusted p value, and then the absolute log two fold change here. Okay, and uh, assure, uh, very assuring, I, I see uh, those uh, familiar genomes called PGK1, IGFVP3, and SLC2A3, I, which I know they are hypoxia useful and they are the top differentially expressed genes. Uh, in this experiment, and I know that experiment worked. So always do a sanity check uh, uh, when you see the results, and uh, talk to a, um, a biologist. Biologist, if you uh, don't know enough of the biology background. Okay, so we uh, covered how to uh, get accounts from FASTQ files to accounts using Salmon quantification, and then how to read the quantification files into R using TX import and then use uh, the uh, DSIG2 uh, package to do differential gene expression. We also covered how to examine the p-value uh, uh, distribution using histogram and to uh, identify the uh, odds uh, of your data analysis. So I hope this is uh, helpful for you and uh, make sure you click subscribe if you like this content. I will see you next time.